On this channel, I've shown you several historical markers from around the United States in most episodes, but in this series, I'm going to spotlight the organizations that bring these markers to the public so everyone who visits that location can enjoy and learn local history. In this short documentary, I will not be focusing on the content of markers, but the organization. Just about every U.S. state has its own historical society. The Illinois State Historical Society dates back to 1899. This was to help support the Illinois State Historical Library and to encourage research of the land of Lincoln. There's a lot of history of the organization I could get into, but it is a not-for-profit group that relies solely on donations, membership dues, bequests, and foundation grants. Its headquarters is on the campus of University of Illinois Springfield. Throughout this video, I will refer to the society as the ISHS, its initials. Automobiles and paved roads were becoming very common in the 1920s and 1930s, and many states began putting up roadside historical markers. Illinois began doing so in 1934. To this day, Illinois continues to put up these historical markers. It varies year by year how many are put up all around the prairie state. In 2022, at least five were placed all over. The number of markers erected by the ISHS is unknown, but there are over 400 of them all over the state of Illinois. There is also one in Vincennes, Indiana. Most of the markers are made of cast aluminum, and they have the society's name and logo on them. What I find the most interesting is how the historical marker format has changed over the years and the decades. It is not known what the first historical marker erected by the ISHS was, but several were put up in Vandalia, Illinois, among other places in Illinois. A lot of the early markers do not list the sponsors or the ISHS. In fact, so many of them just say the state of Illinois. Some of the markers put up during the 1930s are still standing. There were not many markers put up in the 1940s, perhaps due to World War II and other events. In the 1950s, markers began popping up again. In the 1960s, the marker format had changed. Markers with a large rectangular format with a light or navy blue background began popping up. This ended in the early 1970s. So now here is a, one of those classic markers from the 1960s, probably late 60s to the early 70s. This was put up by the Illinois State Historical Society as well as the Illinois Department of Transportation. 1972, but I think that was the last year they start, they ended with this format. And this is Paris, Illinois, and it has like the horizontal format. It's got the C Historic Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the more small town and rural Illinois Historical Society markers are usually marked with that sign, Historical Marker. And I'm usually about a mile before you reach the marker, there's a sign that says Historical Marker up ahead. And then you have this marker placed in 1935, which I'm sure, I don't know if it's changed very much since then, but it is unusually placed in that field. By the way, the marker is about the cantonment Wilkinsonville. In the 1980s, several what I call longer and bigger markers were being put up. It is probably better to call them a larger format, but a lot of them were being placed all over Illinois. In the mid to late 1980s, there were a few markers put up on major highways that were near the state borders. They were all titled Welcome to Illinois, and some of them contained the same description but had local history as well as where the major highway would lead you to in Illinois. These larger format markers continued into the 1990s, but some were also very smaller. Sometime in the 2000s, the marker format changed once again with a different color along with a different font. Markers can either be small or large format, depending on the subject matter or details of the subject. Some of the newer markers have photos, some don't. In the 2020s, the ISHS teamed up with the William G. Pomeroy Foundation, as they have been a co-sponsor of recent markers. So now I am in East Alton, Illinois, and this is one of the most recent markers that was placed by the Illinois State Historical Society in November of 2022, as I'm doing this video. And this one, of course, has a photo, just like the other one here in East Alton, which is by the um, City Hall building and museum but this one talks about the world war one war horses in east alton got a lot of 
sponsors, including the William G. Pomeroy Foundation, which I may do in a series behind the organization, one in the future. As I mentioned in my other Behind the Organization episodes, some markers erected by the ISHS are no longer standing. There are many different reasons, perhaps due to theft, vandalism, and others. A lot have shown wear over time due to weather conditions. Some have actually been replaced with a newer format. So the same marker was placed right here, and a newer one had been placed since the last time I was here with a brand new signage, really crisp, clear. And it has the same text on there and even though it was way way recent than 1935 I mean I guess they just wanted to make sure people knew that it was originally placed in 1935 but either way it is good to know that um, somebody did something about replacing this marker because yes it definitely looked bad <laughs> in its final days and I don't know where the final marker is at the moment but I'm sure it's pretty much either in a scrapyard or in storage at least one was taken down due to its controversial content. This one in Murfreesboro, Illinois. So what makes a subject or town qualify for its own historical marker? According to the Illinois State Historical Society's website, the historic site must have national or statewide significance. To have a marker erected, there are a number of rules and maybe to some obstacles. Financing, permission from the landowners, completing a submission, and so on. The marker can have as many sponsors as possible, be it from local organizations such as churches, schools, businesses, and local historical societies. There are more details on that on the ISHS website. There are also what I call look-alike markers. These are those that have the same format but are not sponsored by the ISHS. These days, whenever a historical marker gets installed in a town or city, it is treated like a community event. At least one person representing the ISHS is usually present at the ceremony. It is also worth mentioning that these ISHS markers are not in every Illinois county. There are 17 counties that do not have historical markers put up by the ISHS yet. The ISHS continues to provide resources and historical information to anyone who is simply interested in the state of Illinois history. For more information, please visit the website. I will leave the link in the comments. There you will find a list of every Illinois State Historical Society marker that can be found, although some are marked missing. Thanks for watching this Behind the Organization episode of Historically Marked.